Heat maps can bring your data to life. They allow you to visualize the relationships between three variables on a 2D plane. And using color, they allow you to understand these relationships, even if they are complicated. We'll take a look at five applications. A confusion matrix for model accuracy to show movements between groups, time series data to show temperature changes, a correlation matrix, and lastly, to visualize mean SHAP interaction values. So let's dive into the first one. A confusion matrix is used to evaluate the classification accuracy of your model. When your target variable has many classes, it's useful to visualize this matrix with a heat map. The heat map you see here comes from a model used to predict the language of a piece of text. The Y axis gives the actual language and the X axis gives the language predicted by the model. The numbers on the diagonal give the number of correct predictions. The off diagonals give the number of incorrect predictions. English is incorrectly predicted as German 11 times. Using this heat map, we can quickly see where our model goes wrong. For example, the model most often confuses Portuguese for Spanish. If you want the code for this heat map or any of the others in this video, check out the Medium article in the description. This article also goes into more depth about the data used and how to interpret the heat maps. The next heat map is used to show movements between groups through time. The groups are based on the air quality index or AQI of American cities. We can see that 20 cities improve from being unhealthy for sensitive groups to a moderate level. In this next one, we are taking heat maps a bit too literally. We show actual temperature changes through time. Each cell gives the average global temperature in that month. We can clearly see the impacts of climate change. If we had used the temperature for a certain country or region, we may also have been able to see differences between the summer and winter months. You may have seen an example of our fourth heat map before. We have the correlations of variables in our house price data set. We can see that variable three and four are negatively correlated. The last row gives correlations with the target variable. This can help identify features that will be good predictors. Our last heat map is used to visualize SHAP interaction values. If you're familiar with SHAP, this is similar to the absolute mean SHAP plot, except now we are considering both main and joint contributions to the prediction. On the diagonal, we have the average main effects. On the off diagonals, we have the average interaction effects. You can see that the experience degree and performance sales interaction effect are significant. This suggests that there are interactions between these features. Lastly, if you find this video or article useful, consider becoming one of my referred members on Medium. You'll get access to all of the amazing data science content on the site and I'll get a part of your fee.